and welcome to another episode of Ubar. In today's episode, I'm going to give you a tour around the serverless framework enterprise console. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing, or software engineering practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started. <laughs> If you have been following me around, i am used serverless framework since the first video ever and it was like version 0. Point something and I've been using it since very early on and every time they release something it makes me happy and I want to try it. I have a couple of other videos trying some other experiments they have done. I can link them in the description box and in some cards here if you want to check them out. But this is a new thing that they have launched that is the Enterprise Console and it's enterprise but it's free if you have less than I think a million requests per month or something like that. In this video I want to give you a review or a tour around the serverless framework enterprise console. I will put it in the monitoring kind of playlist because I think it's natural belonging there. But uh, however the, the console has more than monitoring, it's not only that, but I think the biggest capability that it has is has the monitoring, so I will put it there next to the other kind of platforms I have review. So what is this console? It's basically a place where you can operate and manage your serverless application in one place. The idea is that you don't need to have 20 different type of console for all the different things you want to do. So you can deploy, you can monitor, you can have your alerts, you can have your secrets, your team, everything under one place. And I think with time this console is going to evolve to have more and more features. I think in the market nowadays there are many tools that allow you to have this centralized thing but the cool thing of using this uh, platform, this console, is that it's integrated with the serverless framework so if you're already using serverless framework basically it just works so you don't need to add any libraries or anything else to your project. So that's kind of a good thing for me because I am use serverless framework in all my projects so it's kind of cool to see this um, just happens out of the box for all my existing applications. So in this video I want to give you a tour around the console, I want to show you all the different features that you get out of it like the monitoring, the alerts, the secret management and things like that and I will connect an existing application because I think that's the most normal case that you have something already built uh, and you want to connect it to the uh, dashboard so you can see how, how it works and how easy it is to connect and then we will do some experiments so let's get to the code so let's start this video like we started the other videos in the monitoring series by getting our monitoring test project into our computer and then doing some little modifications to it. So we are cloning it and putting another name. In this case we are going to go with the serverless enterprise test name and when it's ready we just can open it in Visual Studio Code and get started with it. We are going to do just simple modifications, just change the name of the project. So if I have deployed this project before not uh, having any conflicts and then we are going to change the name of the queue and of the database just for the same reason that we are not having conflicts with existing projects. If you have never deployed this then you can keep everything the same. We are going to use the serverless framework enterprise. You can find the documentation in this github repo that I will link in the description box. I will show you step by step how you can get started. Basically, if you go to dashboard.serverless.com and there you uh, create an account, I already have one with this email, so I will get into it, but creating an account is very simple. And there you can basically get started. So you can add a new application and when you add a new application, you just have to put a name, select a deployment profile, you can pick the default, but you can create later new ones depending on where you want to deploy this thing. I will keep the default one and then when you create a new application it has some instructions on how to deploy this service. Basically it's as uh, simple as following the instructions but if you have an existing project what you need to do 
is just add a couple of things to your serverless YAML and it will work right away. So basically, if you have a new project, you install serverless framework. If you already have it, then you don't need to worry. Then you can create a sample service, but we already have an existing application, so we don't need to do that. And then we need to add in our serverless YAML this tenant and app, and that's what we are going to do in our application because we don't have that. So I will just copy that uh, tenant and app. That is what the serverless enterprise needs. And then I need to log in from my terminal to the system, to the dashboard. In a way, it will just go there. It will log me in and voila, it's working. And the next step, the last step is to deploy this. And then after it's deployed, then we will start seeing some things in our dashboard. So I will deploy this and I will speed this up as always. But first I want to show you what it does. It does the similar things that what it does was doing before, but now it's uh, also do, doing something called safe words. So it's analyzing some uh, rules that we will pass and then it will tell me if those rules are applied or not. For example, I have one warning and then it tells me that I have seven of these rules that are passed, one warning and zero errors. And then it will go to a normal uh, serverless framework deployment. So I will speed this up. When it's completed, we go back to our dashboard and we refresh and we will see that our application has one deployment and we can see that in which region it is and there we can see in the main console for this region we can see a thing that says activities and insights and there it shows us the deployment that it was deployed by foobar that's me and at the time that it was deployment then we can see the summary how many functions how many subscriptions subscriptions are the ways to trigger the functions when it was last deployed then we can see the errors and invocation in a graph and then we can see if there's invocations and call stars and things like that. In the side, we can play a little bit with the time frame and we can see in the last 15 minutes, in the last hour, in the last 15 minutes, uh, three days or something like that. So you can play a little bit like that. You can also see the functions and you can see the descriptions. So if we click in a function, we can see when it was deployed, by whom, and which runtime, how long is the timeout, in this case is six seconds, the memory, that is uh, 1,024 megabytes, the provider, the account ID, and then we can see the name of the uh, specific function, the ARN of that function, and the handler. And here, I think it's a very simple uh, dashboard that it shows some information from our function, and then we have the subscriptions. And in here we can see, for example, this is an HTTP subscription, we can see um, some information about it, if it's a post, and then the REST API ID, the endpoint, how we can call it, and then we will see the function that is linked to. I think these views are pretty simple and it shows some information that is kind of nice and like that they show me how to call it or they show me the URL, but in general it's not something I will go and visit a lot. So now I will uh, run with Artillery some uh, calls to the system, so I will update my artillery uh, script, the flow. If you don't know what is artillery and what I'm doing here, I recommend you to check this other video. I will link it in the description box below when I show you how to use artillery and how to do load testing with it. I like it a lot, so for getting some information in these monitoring tools is nice. So I will just run this uh, script with a new URL, and this will start uh, doing calls to my backend all different types of call triggering the four functions and then in the dashboard we can start seeing some action. This dashboard is very simple so but the cool thing is that you don't really need to do anything to get this information you just need to use a rollless framework so if you're using it you should start getting information right out of the way out of the box without you importing any libraries that's pretty nice and then the information just comes as it comes so you don't need to wait much and we can see that we have many invocations in all our lambdas already. So that's pretty neat. And if we see with the time is passing, then we can uh, get lots and lots of invocations. If we go down to this little graph, it says that we have how many invocations we have for each of the functions, how many errors, there is no errors now. 
and then if we go down we can see the percentage of uh, calls that are call starts and how many are timeouts and we don't have any timeouts now so that's kind of nice in the bottom we can see the duration for our functions i kind of don't like it that is everything in one graph i would like to see that a little bit more separated by functions but well i don't know i don't know if it brings that much information to have everything for the four functions in one graph it's kind of weird but well and then if you play a little bit with the time you can see how the different graph uh, behave one thing we want to do is to go to profiles and there i will show you um, the safe words and that's kind of really cool that's one of my favorite features from the dashboard because the idea of the serverless uh, framework enterprise is not only for monitoring uh, but it's also to keep track of your project and maintain it in the long run and these kind of safe words are kind of cool things to make sure that you are always kind of committing to some principles in your project when you want to deploy that things are happening so in this case this comes out of the box but you can add new ones so for example uh, this prevents the first one prevents the asterisk permissions the star permission in your roles so if you have those this uh, this safe word will trigger and then you can limit which regions you want to use and you can edit all these uh, safe words to have whatever you want the same with allow runtime so if you only want to allow no then you can do that and say and um, things like that so i i really really like this so i recommend you to explore it because i think it's one of the quite powerful things for example the uh, that letter q is something that everybody forgets and i think it's kind of nice that it's enforced you to to use it so the next thing I want to show you from the profile is the secrets. This dashboard has out of the box the secrets management. I don't know if I will do my secrets here. I kind of like them to do them in the AWS uh, account directly with the store parameters or the secret manager. But this is one way and I wanted to show it. So it's very simple. You just put your secret there and then in your YAML, you make a reference to it and then you have access to it. So it's super simple as doing this uh, secrets and the name of the uh, name of the secret. So we can try that out in our serverless YAML, for example, and we can create a new environmental variable called secret, and then just calling test the secret test. We have access to it. I don't know. I I like the way that we will do it with the parameter store, but this is another way to manage secrets. And if you have shared secrets in a multi-cloud, then maybe this might work. Uh, one thing I want to show you is how errors appear. So let's go to handler.js and let's make an error happen. So I will comment out this uh, body when we are parsing the the event body. So this will trigger an error because things will not work. I will deploy and we will trigger this error from postman so i will speed this up until we get to the service totally deploy and we can try it out so i will open postman i will put that url and then i have already the body ready the row a json and i will just send that and i will get an internal server error good if you want to know what i'm doing there just go and check the first videos in this series i'm going step by step there but but it, it's not part of this. I just wanted to trigger an error and I did. So now I go back to my application and then I can see in the activities and insight that another deployment has happened. And if you see, there is quite a lot of uh, things there. We will look at those in a moment. So if I click on the deployment, one nice thing is that uh, it shows me uh, when it was, by whom, and then how my safe words are, and then the changes in the serverless yaml so that's nice it shows that we added this secret so that's something i like it will be nice to have a little bit more integration not only with the serverless yaml but with the whole project to know which files change that will be something that that can be nice to know for each deployment in a visual way and then if we play a little bit with the times we can see that uh, how the graph moves but we cannot see the error i don't know why maybe because the scale is too too big there was too many calls and there was only one error but i would like to sh see it anyhow even if the scale is a little bit off because errors are important but this is how it's done so if you click show as errors only then the error will appear and then if you click there then it will take you to this view that is 
I think this is very neat because you can go and debug the error. So it tells you what kind of errors, how many times it occurred and when it occurred. And then you can see the information of the error and where it happened and what happened there. So you can see the stack trace and you can see the different uh, files, what they, uh, what, what was going on when the error happened and also the logs. So there you can start uh, debugging what happened to your, to your file. One thing I want to mention that nowadays I'm using a lot of these kind of monitoring tools to uh, work on my applications. I rarely go to the logs in Cloud uh, Watch to check logs, things like that. I like to use more these tools to just uh, use these logs functionalities and uh, tracing and the um, and all these features I have been showing around to, to debug my application. So I think this is kind of nice that you can see the error here. So that's something I like. So after that, I want to show you these new messages that appear that it, there are escalated invocations in the function. And this is something that happened because they have some kind of anomaly detection sign thing. And when uh, something goes out of the norm, then they make these alerts. And in this case, we were from and Lambda that didn't have any fun, uh, activity at all. We uh, used the artillery and we create a lot of traffic. So this is an anomaly. And then it tells me that during the last five minutes, this function has a lot of invocations, which is very high, it's very rare. And then uh, it might be something wrong. It shows me a graph. I don't know, it doesn't shows much information, but it, then it shows me how many invocations in the last five minutes, how it peak in the 48 hours. So it's kind of a huge uh, increase. And then it tells me some way to resolve this. If it was an error, if something not expected. So I really like this thing. This is really, really cool. Uh, if you want to get notified of this type of alerts, one thing you can do is go and create a notification for your application, put your email address, and then you will start receiving all kind of alerts or the ones that you um, tick there in those boxes. I think these anomaly detections are really cool and I think they are very powerful to, to have information. Uh, this is a quite new thing. So uh, if you compare it with others, it might be lacking some features, but it has a lot of things that the other tools don't have. But I think it's something that might develop in the long run. I would like to see an architectural diagram. I think that will bring a lot to the table. I would love to see traces. I would like to see ways that I can analyze a little bit more application, more my application when it's up. And I would like to see more about my resources, not only about my, my lambdas. But I think this is very new. So let's check it out in six months and see where it's out. And as always, you can find all the links that I mentioned in the description box below. So go ahead and try it out. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. I'm planning my fall calendar for the content. So I would love to know what kind of content you would like to see. I have some things already in the pipeline, but I'm still working on a couple of more things that I would like to to bring to you so let me know in the console what you would like to see around here as always there are videos from my channel to watch so go ahead and click and i see you next tuesday in another episode of ciao ciao